Hello, everyone. This is Michelle, and I am from Faber Castell and Creativity for Kids, and we are thrilled you are joining us today. We've done a few of these classes for Michaels where we're usually making a knit hat, but this is our first cup cozy. So uh, with me today is Meredith. She does have our quick knit loom kit, which is available at Michaels. If you don't have it though, and you have a loom and some yarn, you can follow along. So Meredith, I'll turn it right over to you. Yay, I am so happy and excited to be here. So thank you so much, Michelle, for introducing me. And like you said, for those of you who do not have our quick knit loom kit, you can go to Michael's and purchase a loom that looks like this. And that will be sufficient as well and get yourself some pretty yarn and you'll be all set. Um, you also will need a pair of scissors today during our crafting. So let's clear off some space and see what's in the box. All right, let's switch views and we can see. There we go. Wow, this box is completely full of fun things. So we have our handy dandy instructions. We'll put those to the side. We have one, two, balls of yarn, of rainbow yarn. We have two fluffy balls. And then we have our tools. We'll just open those up. We can see what those look like. Cut, cut, cut. So we have this fun looking tool here that is like a hook. You can see like that. And we'll be using that a lot today. And then we have a large pink plastic needle, which we'll use at the end of our crafting. Then we have a cute little blue heart, which will be our decoration for our cup cozy. And you can see there's little holes punched out in here, so that'll be really handy. And we have our needle threaders, which are blue pieces of plastic in a hoop that really help when it's time to thread our needle. So let's begin. And like Michelle said, if you have tuned in before, you may have seen us making our quick knit loom hat with our fuzzy balls. But today we're doing our cup cozy. So we'll skip over to where it says, make a cup cozy. There we are. I'm wondering how many friends have been here before when we made our hat. And if you have made your hat, I'd love to see it. If you or an, an older person could share it on social media, that would be really cool. So here we are. Making a cup cozy. So I have a feeling we're not going to need both um, rolls of yarn. So we'll just have one here with us. And we'll put our tools to the side until we need them. And here's our loom. All right. Not your yarn on the anchor peg, leaving a short tail. Now let's look at our, our loom here. Here along the side, right here, is our anchor peg. This is really important because this is where we start. Now if we take a closer look, you can see each of these pegs that are standing up, they have a little bit of a groove inside of them. And that's gonna be really helpful for when we use our little hook tool to help us move the yarn. 
So if you have been on our class before when we made our hat, this is very similar to making a hat, but a little bit different. It won't take as long and we're not gonna use the full amount of pegs. We're only gonna be using a couple of the pegs. So you'll see in a minute here. So as it said, not your yarn on the anchor peg, leaving a short tail. So let's find our yarn. And like what I like to do, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. In the end of the yarn, sometimes you're able to find the very end end. Not there, let's see if it's over here. And then you're able to pull the yarn out from the center of the ball. Let's see. No, nope, it's not in there either. Well, that's okay. We'll just shove that back in. And we'll use the end that's sticking out right here. We'll remove our plastic. Okay. So this is not any kind of a special knot. You can just tie a simple knot around just like that. And here's our little tail. So step one, check. Step two, wrap the yarn around the pegs as shown in step one on the previous page. So let's go back to step one of the previous page. Now, as you can see, they've knotted their yarn on the anchor peg. And then it shows you how to wrap your yarn around each one of the pegs. Now, it's easy to remember that you want the yarn to go back around each peg. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you're looking at your loom like this. You take your yarn and you go back behind it first and then in front of it. So you can see here, the yarn is completely around the peg. Then the second peg, you do the same thing. So you go behind the peg and go completely around it. And then you go to the third peg and you do the same thing. Michelle, is there anyone out there who might have a question on how, how to do this so far? We can back up because we've just started, so it's not No, too, I, too I think we're okay. Um, we do have a question. Um, somebody has yarn, but they don't have a loom. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else they could use. Um, or maybe they just watch and then when they receive the loom, they can try it themselves. That's a great idea. I think watching, so then you get the hang of it. And as, um, I don't know if it was mentioned or not, but this is being recorded. So you mm -hmm. can always go back onto Michael's website and revisit it when you do have the loom and then you can follow along again. So for now, Maybe you just want to watch and see how quick and easy this is. So where were we here? We were wrapping our yarn and it says to wrap it around when you get to peg nine, stop. So we've already wrapped it around one, two, three, four, five, six, and I should mention, you don't want to wrap it too, too tight. Seven, eight, nine. All right, let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we've wrapped it around up to peg nine. Wrap the ninth peg again and start wrapping back towards peg one. So to do that, let's push our yarn down. 
So we have some room on our pegs to wrap the yarn again. All right, so we'll wrap it in front and then wrap around the back, wrap around the back, wrap around the back, loosen up our yarn a little bit. And we just want to wrap it tight enough so it stays on the loom, but not too tight because then it'll be difficult to move the yarn for this next step. Okay. So I'm holding on to the yarn up against the loom so this doesn't unravel. So for the next step, what you want to do is you want to lift up this bottom piece of yarn. Let's see if you can see here. This bottom row, we're going to lift up the yarn and put it over the top row, just like that. And now, since we did that, I can let go of that piece of yarn and it'll stay. It won't go unraveled. So we're going to lift the bottom row of yarn over the top row of yarn up until we get to the ninth peg. And as you can see, this little hook slides right down into the groove of the peg and it makes it really easy to pick up that piece of yarn and flip it over the top. So whoever came up with this loom is pretty genius, I think. All right, so we've gotten there. All right, it says what to do next. Oh, we have to turn the page. Oh, here. Hook, repeat. Continue back and forth, wrapping the and hooking. After knitting a few rows, remove the knot from the anchor peg and tie it to a nearby yarn loop on your cozy. Stop knitting when your cozy is eight inches long. Okay, so now we just get to go back and forth loom knitting until we reach eight inches. And that important step of moving all of our yarn down, I just did. So move your yarn down and then you just go around each of the pegs again, just like this. And there's different ways to hold your loom. You can hold it, like I'm holding it kind of like away from you, or you might want to hold it this way, which I think was turn, or termed the, what was it, Ferris wheel style? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that info with me. I love it. So this is pretty, I think this is easier when you turn your loom sideways. It's a little easier for little hands to hold on to and for my hands at that, at that point as well. Here we go, and our last one. And we push them all down. So why we're only going to the ninth peg is because we only want to knit this width of a piece of, um, of what we're making. So for our hat, we went all the way around over and over again, and it created this circle effect. So for this, um, project, we're knitting something that's going to be just straight down like a rectangle of yarn, of knitted yarn. So that's hey, why. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go ahead. Um, can you show us um, again how to not 
on the anchor. Maybe sure. Untie that and then re retie that on if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. Actually, I have another loom right over here. So I'll show you what oh, with yeah. different. Thank you so much. No problem. So here's our loom. And here's our little anchor. And I'll show you here. You just want to go around the anchor and tie like you're uh, starting to tie your shoe. Kind of like that. So it's a simple knot. It's not a double knot. It's just one, one tie around. So it's easy to untie when you need to untie it. Was that helpful? Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'll just untie that. There you go. But that was a great question because sometimes when we say tie a knot, you automatically think that you might have to tie it in a double knot rather than a single knot. All right, so here we go again, around and around. And if your fingers are having a little bit of trouble holding the yarn tight enough to go around the pegs, you can always put one finger behind and hold the yarn on so it doesn't come undone. Because sometimes that happens and it's a little frustrating, but it's easy to fix. So there we go. And this is really something that you can do when you're watching TV or just hanging out listening to music. Because once you get the hang of it, it's really easy and it goes pretty quickly. So to make a cup cozy doesn't take that long. To make the hat, it takes a little bit longer. But still, once you get the hang of it, it goes really quick. And then it it might be um, one of those things that you find really fun. And then you wanna make hats for all of your friends and your family. And then the same with the cup cozies. You might have a lot of cups that you want to keep cozy so you can make multiple of them. We give you so much yarn that you could probably make at least four or five cup cozies with this amount of yarn. And although we give you the pom-poms for the hat, you could probably put a pom-pom on your cup cozy too. It might be a little bit bulky around your cup, but eh, maybe you're just a big fan of big pom-poms and therefore it would be really cute. There we go. So you can see, this is how much we've already done. And now we wanna keep going until it's eight inches long. And something about these instructions that I absolutely love is at the bottom of the instructions, you can see it's a measuring tool. So it's labeled that from one end to the other end, it's 15 inches. So for our cup cozy, we're gonna go eight inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's right after the fold. So I actually started a cup cozy yesterday and I wanna show you how far I got. Ta-da! So I think we're pretty close to eight inches with this one. We can measure it and see. So from one end up, oops, from one end. I think 
two more rows and we'll be at eight inches right, right there. So I'm gonna keep going with this cup cozy so I can finish it so I can hit that eight inches and then I can show you how to get your cup cozy off your loom. So here we go. Meredith, we have a friend who um, has the yarn on a little too tight. Oh, okay. Bring it over. Do you have any suggestions? Yes. Yeah, so if it's a little too tight, you might be able to stick your um, hook in and just kind of pull it a little bit and pull it a little bit until the yarn loosens up. So sometimes there's a little bit of give in the yarn. And if you go around to each loop and you just kind of pull on it, you might be able to loosen each of the loops enough so that you're able to move the yarn over the top. Let's see if that helps. All right, so Michelle, did we have any other questions? Or should we keep going? Um, yeah, you know what, our, our friend did try that and it wouldn't work. Um, but I think if you undo the last row, it may help to loosen it up. And then as you wrap, you don't have to pull as tight. Right. So you might be able to do something like this. So the last loop that was put on, you might be able to put it back to where it was. So let me show you that again. So this loop right here, this little green loop right here, this was the last loop that I had moved over. If you can put your hook up underneath that loop and put it back on the peg, it's kind of hard. You might have to get it from the opposite direction. Put it back on the peg. So now there's two loops on the peg again. You might be able to go back and do what I said um, to loosen up the, the yarn again. So if you were to put all of your, the last row back onto the peg like that. So there's two, two pieces of yarn back on the peg. It might make it loose enough for your, um, for you to loosen up that tight row. So let's just try it. I'm gonna try it with you. And it's a little tricky because you don't wanna, um, like that one, I, I kind of separated the yarn a little. You don't wanna separate the yarn, but let's try this together. It's easy to do. Once you are wrapping the yarn, you don't want it to come undone. So it's really easy to wrap it tightly. But instead of wrapping it tightly, try and just use your other finger to hold it on instead of wrapping the yarn tightly. There we go. And I think I have two, one, two, maybe three more to do. So let's put that one back on. Let's put this one back on. And it's really helpful that this is rainbow yarn so you can see the different, um, the different colored loops that you have to move. So this one is a little tricky. Let's see if I can get it. Come on, little yellow loop. You can do it. 
Join your friends on the pegs. We got it. Okay. So once you get your loops back on the pegs, they actually have to go on the underneath part. So they have to go below because those are the ones that are going to be lifted up over top. So we just lifted them up and put them back on the, on the loom. We want to loosen things up a little bit and then go back to taking them off the pegs. So this one, they're both the same color. That makes it a little tricky. There we go. I kind of feel like I'm a dentist with this tool, rearranging things. It's a fun tool. There we go. There we go. Yay, okay, we did it. So we can see there's two rows of yarn on here now. How's our friend doing? Was she able to, or he or she able to do what we just did? I believe so. Um, so let's let's go ahead and continue. And remember, friends, this is being recorded. And oh, we did hear from our friend, and we are all set, ready to go. Thank oh, you. wonderful! So, yep. Now all you want to do is you want to loosen each one of your loops, loosen them up a little bit using your um, your loom hook. So then when you do move the yarn, like we were moving it, pulling it up and over the top, up and over the top, hopefully we've loosened it up enough so you can continue on with your cup cozy. But I'm so glad that you brought that up because that is something that I've never really had to do, but we can see that it's very, it's very um, doable. So you can kind of take a step backwards and then redo it and then keep going. So thank you for asking that question. All right, so I need to do, I wanna say about two more rows and then we'll take it off of our loom. Okay, so here's our first one. So I was joking around with Michelle and my friend Maria before class saying that if you made two cup cozies, you could put them on your wrist. And they would be like wristbands instead of cup cozies. Okay. So then you could have Some friends hand. ask that and they put it <laughs> as a bracelet. And you can put it on like a bracelet. Of course. <laughs> Yay! I love it. It's so fun and chunky. It's really cute. So yeah. I'm so glad I'm on the same wavelength as someone else out there. <laughs> you could probably, you know, adjust it if it needs to be a little bit smaller or thinner. Um, but that would be really fun to do. Oh, but great. Rainbow yarn. So beautiful. So if you wanted to make a smaller cup cozy or a bracelet, then you probably wouldn't have to do eight inches. So we chose eight inches because that was a pretty standard size for a cup. But for something thinner, you could probably do maybe like seven inches or six inches and um, see how that would fit around your smaller cup or around your wrist. So here we go. This is our second row. Let's double check with our measuring tool in our instructions. So 
put it down like this and it needs to go to here. So we're basically there. Okay. So let's look at our instructions and see what we need to do in order to take it off the loom. So it says, make sure you have one loop of yarn on each peg, which we do. There's only one. Cut the working yarn 30 inches. So this is what the working yarn is. It's the yarn that you were wrapping around the pegs. So this is called your working yarn. So it says to cut it at 30 inches. And like we said in our instructions, from end to end is 15 inches. So here's 15, then another 15 would be 30. So we'll go ahead and cut our yarn. There we go. Okay, thread the working yarn on the needle. So we'll use our handy little needle threader, our little blue needle threader and our needle. And all you do is you put the end of the yarn through the needle threader. So you basically thread the needle threader. And then you take the tip of your needle threader and put it through the needle, the eye of the needle, and pull your yarn through. Ta da! So, this is just a handy little tool. So, um, it makes it easier to thread your needle. All right. Now, Number two, sew through each loop on the pegs. Do not pull the sewing yarn tight. You want to keep it in a rectangular shape. So if you were to pull your yarn tight, um, which is what we do for the hat, we pull the yarn tight when we're taking it off of the loom. And what it does is it cinches what you've just um, created on your loom. It cinches it all together. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep it in a nice rectangle shape. So we're not going to cinch it. We're just going to sew through each loop. So starting with our first one right here, you can use the um, little groove in the peg to your advantage and just put the tip of the needle through the groove up into your yarn loop, just like that. And you're going to keep going through each one of your pegs. So we're pretty much just sewing all of our loops together. All the loops that are still on the pegs, we're just sewing them all together. And you started on the first peg and you're continuing to the left, correct? Correct, yes. So we'll keep going. Just like how we started, we started here at the anchor and we went left. Well, I started here at the first peg and I'm moving towards the ninth peg. There you go. So also, if you do not have this kit and you are working with your own yarn and your own loom, um, the yarn you use will definitely matter as to how long it takes you to create a project. So the fluffier the yarn, the quicker it'll be because the yarn takes up more space. The thinner the yarn, um, it may, might take you a little bit longer because the thinner the yarn, the less space it takes up. So this is nice fluffy yarn. So it helps our projects go a little bit quicker. Okay, so we've gotten to our last peg. Let's see what to do next. 
you are ready to sew the sides together to make the cozy. So we need to take our yarn off of the pegs. So go ahead and slip each loop off of each peg. There we go. Now this would be the magical part when you're making a hat that you would then pull the working yarn and all of this would become really cinched up and nice and tight. But since we're not doing that and we want to make this kind of like um, a rectangle shape, we just want to barely tug and kind of form that rectangle shape. So you can pull your yarn a little bit, pull it a little so your yarn or so the end of your cup cozy is a little bit more regular shaped than irregular shaped. And you kind of just pull and rearrange where the little loops are, just like that. So we're just about there, I think. Moving the loops a little bit. Ta-da! So the end of our weaving is about the same as the width of what we wove. Well, that's fun to say. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, and we still have all this working yarn left, we want to sew the sides together. So you can see here, here's the rectangle that our friends who made the instructions did. And it says, sew the sides together. So fold the cozy in half. Start by sewing the top two loops together. Continue to sew the loops together as you work your way down the cozy. All right. So step one, fold your cozy in half. So this side meets this side, or this corner meets this corner. So we're going to put them together like that. And actually, what I'm going to do. So you can kind of see this is one type of a pattern on one side. And if you flip it over, you can see this pattern on the other side. So this looks more like V's and this looks more like dashes. So I'm going to fold it so the V's are on the inside and the dashes are on the outside. So I'm going to sew it together like this. So we're going to sew it with our seam on the inside. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that when we finish. So it said to sew the two loops together. So you can just take your needle. And we're currently on this side. So we're going to put our needle through this side, just like this. And pull it through. So we're already tethering the two sides together. And I'm just going to go back over here. And this is, I believe, called like a whip stitch. I'm not sure completely. I don't sew very often, but I, I think this might be a, something called a whip stitch. So you're just starting on the top side and pulling your needle, putting your needle through both sides and pulling it through over and over again until you get to the very bottom. Is this clear for everyone, I hope? Are there any questions on this step, Michelle? Um, no, we just had a, a question about, um, do we have to have the dashes on the outside? Um, but like you mentioned, you can stitch it 
either way. Right. So you can stitch it either way. And since this is fluffy yarn, it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna show you why I chose to put the dashes on the outside in, in about a minute here. So I'm almost done. I'm almost to the end where our tail is. So I think two more stitches. One and two. There we go. Now that we're down, or we're we're at the other end. And we have this piece of yarn and we have this piece of yarn. We tie those two pieces together. So I don't think we need our needle on anymore. We just tie these two pieces together. And this time you do want to create a double knot. So I just tied it once. I'm going to tie it a second time to create that double knot. And pull it nice and tight because you don't want it to come undone. I might even go one more time just to be safe. Okay. Now we can go ahead and trim our yarn so it's not too long. All right. Now this is why I chose to put the dashes on the on uh, to um sew it together with the dashes on the outside. Because now you can turn your cozy inside out and your sewing, your two little ends here will be on the inside of the cozy. So the outside will actually be the V's and this is hidden on the inside. So that's just a little trick um, when you sew things and sometimes you want to hide the seam, you would sew it inside out and then you flip it to hide the seam. So we're almost done. Where is our decoration? Let's see here. We gave you a cute little heart to put on your cup cozy as a sweet little decoration. So you can choose to put it wherever you want. But what you'll need to do is, let's see here, thread a 20 inch piece of yarn onto your needle. So we'll need 20 inches. We'll use our wonderful measuring tool again. There we go. So here's 15 and then another, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Here's 20. There you are, scissors. Okay. So 20 inches, and we'll cut it. And then we'll thread it onto our needle using our needle threader. And we give you two just in case you lose one or just in case one breaks because. They are little pieces of plastic that could break. So that's why we give you two. So here's us putting our yarn onto the needle using the needle threader. Oop. And then what we're going to do is sew our heart onto our cup cozy, or for all of you out there who like this idea, onto your bracelet. What, what? Okay. So I'm going to start by going inside the cup cozy and out through the hole of the heart. So taking your needle and going inside the cup cozy and then out the heart. And you're gonna pull it through so you still have a tail left of your yarn. 
And then I'm gonna go in through the heart. And pull it through. So you can see the stitch on the heart. And then you kind of feel your way back to the next hole from the inside of the cozy and out the hole of the heart. And then back in the heart into the cup cozy and pull it through. So we're just stitching the heart onto the cup cozy. And you kind of feel around again. And here's the needle. I just love how quick and easy this is. It was like very refreshing and really fun to do because it takes not too much time. Um, and once you get the hang of it, it was really, I didn't have to think about it too much. I just did it. And I really do love the idea of making these into bracelets. So we have half of our heart is done. Keep going here. So Michelle, have you ever made a cup cozy? I have not, but I'm excited to try when I'm done with my next blue hat that I'm making. Yay, uh, wonderful. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah, you could make the um, hat not hate cup cozies too. That would oh, be really cute. That would be great. And two more, there's one, and two. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna take the needle off. And like I said, we left some yarn loose when we started, and we have all this yarn left. Well, all you do, is you tie these two pieces of yarn together, again, in a knot, a double knot. So here's one, and then two. Pull it nice and tight so it doesn't come undone. Okay, I am a safety girl. I like to do it three times. So three times. And while you're tying that knot, we do have a question. Um, Somebody is really enjoying our class and would like to know if we have more classes coming up. And if you go on michaels.com, you will see they have classes almost every day. Uh, but I believe our next class that Meredith will be teaching is at the end of November, and it will be a holiday rock painting class. So that is scheduled for November 30th. And we'll really looking forward to that because rock painting is always fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm so happy to hear you're enjoying the class. So I look forward to seeing you for a rock painting at the end of November. Um, I would love to share with you now, thank you, how our cup cozy looks on a cup, Oop. any random cup. So you just slide it on like this. Yay! How cute is that? So not that only adorable. Oh my goodness. Yay! So not only will you keep your head nice and cozy with our hat, but you can keep your drink nice and cozy with our cup cozy. And if you don't want to walk around with a cup and keep your cup cozy, like we said, we can keep our wrists nice and cozy. Has bracelets. Yay! So fun. Well, Michelle, do we have any other questions before we wrap up our class today? Uh, we have one more question. Uh, is this washable if it gets dirty? Oh, I would 
recommend spot cleaning it if it does get dirty. Um, sometimes the yarn might fall apart in different detergents. So I would recommend just spot cleaning it with a little bit of dish soap and water and then letting it air dry. So don't put it in your dishwasher or um, in your wash machine. Thank you. You're and very welcome. Ask if we have to add the heart and we don't. Oh no, you could definitely have it just like this, just yeah. plain. Or if you wanted to, our cute little fuzzy pom-poms. So our pom-poms actually have a little loop on them. It's kind of hard to see against that yellow, but there's a loop and you could just string some thread through the, uh, some yarn through the loop and tie it on to your cup cozy. So you could have a fluffy ball cup cozy rather than a heart cup cozy. Oh, how fun. And hey. friends, I know you've been great in the question and answer box. If you are looking for the link to watch the recording, it will be available in about 24 hours on, um, on Michael's YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and type in Michael's stores, you can see the link to watch this again. And there's also links to um, how to make our hat as well. Yay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I had a wonderful time this afternoon with you, and I hope you did too. And I can't wait to see any of the projects that you have made with your Quick Knit Loom. So I look forward to seeing you again. Have a good afternoon. Julia has one last question. Oh, sure. What's up, Julia? <laughs> Where can she find the unicorn? So if you look behind Meredith, you'll see the Quick Knit Loom unicorn, and that's also a in the Michaels stores and um, it uses the same techniques that we used for the hat as well as for the cup cozy. So again, that, that simple technique, um, but you'll be stuffing a little cute unicorn as well. It's adorable. What a wonderful question. Thank you for asking, Julia. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.